Harvey, thank you so much for joining us. Of course. Uh, what, <laughs> you know, we, we haven't really had a chance to really speak um, because you were busy and we were busy here, but uh, your reaction uh, to this day coming, at which we kind of knew, we knew he was ill, um, but now that it has happened, your reaction? Well, I've just got a flood of reactions. Um, you know, I, I was um, attending the funeral of a dear friend, um, uh, this amazing guy who was an agent, but also has just been a friend for 30 plus years. Um, and I was sitting in, uh, in the synagogue waiting for the service to begin. And Charles, you texted me that OJ Simpson died. And just the counterpoint of Richard Liebner dying, who was just this remarkably amazing, kind, incredible man. And then O.J. Simpson at the same time. It was really hard to process. Um, but boy, did I have different reactions to the two. And uh, look, I, I, I'm uncomfortable talking to you about this because I don't have good feelings about O.J. Simpson. And, you know, you mentioned that he was found not guilty, which is true, uh, in the criminal case. He, a civil jury found that he did indeed kill Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson and awarded more than $33 million, finding with, by clear and convincing evidence that he acted with malice in doing so. So O.J. Simpson is a killer and um, has been judged by, uh, by a jury as such. And I, I have, you know, I have a bunch of reactions. I mean, the thing that I keep coming back to, and I know you talked about, you know, his movie career and everything else, and I had run into him before the murders, and he was a perfectly charming guy. But my reaction is that when he killed um, his ex-wife, Nicole, um, he left her on the doorstep, almost decapitated for her children to find her the next morning, you know, if it weren't for a, their dog that led another neighbor to the doorstep, the kids would have gone stairs and seen their mother dead on the, uh, on the porch. And I can't get that image out of my head because I've seen the autopsy pictures. So that is what defines OJ Simpson to me. Um, I, 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 I also have this feeling, and Charles, I don't know if we've ever really talked about this, but O.J. Simpson really helped me understand the concept of celebrity, because for so long after the trials, I was just amazed and angered, you know, as my friend Dominic Dunn was, who covered this trial, that O.J. Simpson became kind of a folk hero to a lot of people, that in Las Vegas... He, you know, a st steady yeah. stream of people would come up to him wanting to take pictures with him. And I couldn't understand it. It just, I couldn't process it. Now I can. That infamy and fame have blended so in our society that there is no distinction between the two. And O.J. Simpson taught me that lesson. Yeah, Harvey, what you just said, it's so true that, because a after the 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 criminal trial and after the civil trial, he really wasn't, he wasn't out and about in public as much, right? I mean, we'd see him golfing and stuff like that, but he wasn't out in public. And then when he got out of prison, it's almost like he realized what you just said, that infamy and, and fame are kind of the same thing and you're gonna be treated the same way because once he got to Las Vegas, he was not hiding from, from the spotlight. At all, and he was celebrated. He was yeah. celebrated by people who came to Las Vegas. But, he was Harvey. A, do you think attraction. he was? Do you think he was celebrated, or were people in a macabre sense sort of wanting to have a moment with OJ so that they could then go and say, "Oh, I got a photo with OJ. Or, or I talked to OJ." Or I, there, I'm I, sure there I, were some I, people I who were I, celebrating I, him, but I don't think that was. I think most of them were yeah. doing it for the macabre reason. That this is a man I, who killed two people, and here I am taking a photo with him. You know, it's sort of like, you know, an outlaw in the wild, wild west who became famous, a Jesse James type or whatever. Now, I don't think it was, oh, my God, this is a macabre moment. I think they looked at this guy and said, oh, my God, look how famous he is. Everybody knows O.J. 
Jay Simpson, I'm going to take a picture with him. And I think especially over time, um, it started to blur. And then eventually it didn't matter to people. And people don't remember Ron Goldman and uh, they don't remember Nicole Brown Simpson. They remember O.J. Simpson and they know his fame. And that's why I say infamy and fame have blurred to the point where they're one and the same. I want to say one other thing that as much as, you know, I have these strong feelings about O.J. Simpson, I also think that the there was an injustice done to him in this kidnapping trial for which he served prison time, because I feel like in that case, the judge was basically trying to do the justice that wasn't done in the murder case. And that sentence made no sense to me. So even though I had strong feelings and no, he killed these two people, um, I felt that that prison sentence for what he had done in Las Vegas in that hotel room was unfair. But, it, you know, no one was going to feel sympathy for sympathy him, right. for him at that point, because I think most people felt, as you do, that he uh, that he did kill them. And so who's going to get, yeah, you know what as, I mean? Like, as, who's as, feel, as, and I know the justice system isn't supposed to work that way. And that's what you're talking about. Yeah, but. as a lawyer, I, I as a lawyer, I really felt that an injustice in that case was done, even though I felt also felt that an injustice was done in the criminal trial. Right. Um, but that said, a jury clearly ruled he killed these two people. So, um, and I have no doubt about it. Again, I covered every minute of that trial. And not just the trial, I covered it from the day it happened. And I have... You know, I have doubts about lots of things where I'm not certain anymore about much. I'm certain about that. Uh, two things, uh, Ron, before we let you go, uh, Ron Goldman, um, his father, Fred Goldman, uh, his reaction, he told people, was that he wasn't thinking about O.J. Simpson today, uh, that he was focusing on his son, focusing on Ron and realizing just how long it has been uh, since they lost Ron. Uh, at OJ's hands, you're the fact you know, that so I, 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 I got to tell you something. I was thinking about Ron today too. Um, when I was sitting in the in the funeral service, um, I I I was thinking Ron would be in his mid fifties now, and I just thought, wow, that guy whose life was taken when he was so young and vibrant um, would be, you know, getting up there in age, and. He was robbed of that, so that's interesting. I was thinking of Ron myself. Yeah, and uh, interesting that, you know, and believe me, Fred Goldman, that, and that you said the 33 million, OJ didn't pay the, the lion's share of that, right? I mean, that money is still owed to the Goldman family, and... It was protected. The money was protected the way it was structured. You know, part of it was his NFL pension, and part of it was the way his pension, you know, with his financial advisors was... Um, was constructed, but yeah, he um, he really paid virtually nothing in this case. But again, you know, for Fred Goldman, and, 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 and the fact that O.J. Simpson attacked Fred Goldman, called him money grubbing, and all sorts of other things. I wish, yeah. I wish my friend Dominic Dunn were still around because I'd just love to have that conversation with him today because it was just awful, awful. Yeah. Uh, one last thing, you know, uh, O.J., the tweet that went out said that he was surrounded by his children and grandchildren uh, when he passed. Do you think there's any chance that he made some sort of confession um, on his deathbed? A deathbed confession? Absolutely not. O.J. Simpson from everything I know, and I feel, you know, th th there was a lot of psychology that went into this trial where you had to understand the mindset and beyond after the trial. Um, I believe O.J. Simpson had constructed a world in which he didn't do it and that he had convinced himself that he didn't do it. And that world was had pushed away the reality. So I absolutely, positively do not believe there was any deathbed confession here. Oh. Yeah, I, I, would, I would be absolutely shocked if, why would he at this point, you know? Um, Harvey, thanks so much for being with us, man, and um, safe travels back. Thanks, guys.
Appreciate it.